morning dish. He's the hardest working man in show business. His band's music takes you into the midnight hours. And when you wake up, his voice is back on your radio alarm clock. How on earth did this happen? Well, Jeff saw me taking out the trash at the radio station. And he won another award. But this one is better. I'm your food man. That's what I am. It's the Morning Dish with the 2019 Radio Personality of the Year winner, Stephen Phillips. You paying attention to this, Packy? And Murphy's own Sherry Rains. Yeah, you must have given horseback passes to the right guy, Stephen. Well, giddy up. <laughs> And Packy Smith's Shetland Pony is right alongside. You guys know these demo tapes don't just edit themselves together, right? Well, all right. Three cheers for Stephen Phillips. Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. All righty, folks, we're back with you. We're tickled to death. We have got a wonderful movie actress. Uh, she is a uh, song composer, a book writer, and the whole nine yard Channel Forest all. How are you this morning? Good morning, Stephen. I'm doing great. How are you guys? Yeah, Lord, yeah. We're just sitting here. We're arguing, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's what we do. That's all What's we do. Good actually. morning, then. Yeah, yeah, it's another day. Another day. So, how you been doing? I've been doing great, Stephen. I just got back from L.A., been back in the studio, and just really excited about a lot of new things coming up. Well, you've got a lot going on. I would say, you know, like one day I'll talk to you, and you're in in California. Next day you're back in Tennessee, and, and, uh, you know, you're... That's right. Now, are you still doing the act? Are you still acting? Are you still in the actress thing, or have you gone full... You know, it's been quiet because of COVID, but things are about to ramp up again, so I'm sure I'll end up doing some, but I'm getting so busy with the music side of things that I've... I was just thinking that the other day. I'm like, how am I going to fit this all in? But, you know, I'm going to make it happen. I don't, I don't really sleep too much, Stephen. I get a lot done. <laughs> yeah, I know how that is. <laughs> kind of like you, right? <laughs> that, uh, but, you know, uh, as far that's funny, though. You know, a lot of people that's in acting are musicians. It's You know, there's right. a lot of people mm-hmm. in, in on that. Like Joe Pesci. Yeah, there's he a lot of crossover. Acting, but, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and what's cool is because, you know, I've, I've done acting for so long, and I, <clears throat> I've done producing um, short films and things like that, reality TV but it's been really fun because we're producing a lot of music content. So it's been, you know, I've been getting to produce music uh, videos and behind the scenes videos and all kinds of stuff. So I'm still in front of and behind the camera, even when I'm doing music on a regular week. Last week, we wrote a new song on Thursday. We recorded it Friday, shot a video Saturday, and now we're mastering it. Okay. <laughs> so that's, so that's cool. how fast it works sometimes. Yeah, and, and we love it. And this was a new artist out of Vegas we're working with. But um, a young black man who's so talented. Oh, my God, is he talented? His name is Najee. He goes by Cash G, but um, yeah, we just met him and popped the fire, and we're excited. So now, his yeah, name is you know production is part of it. What's his name? His name his his studio name is Cash G, but, but his, his real name is Naji. Why would you change? That's a Najee. perfect name. I mean, why don't you just? I'm well, just, yeah, well, you know, I know, right? I told him the same thing. Like, I love your name, and he was telling me the whole story. But his uh, he, he's named after his mother who died when he was two. Yeah. His, his stage name, Cash G, is after his mom. So we in both, honor of his mom. like Packy here that's with us, he he plays in the band too. He, he, his stage name is Little Pasty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so now, Should we tell him about your stage name? <laughs> yeah, no. Humpty <laughs> Dumpty. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so now, how long have you been in the music? I mean, you got to writing songs. Is this something just recently you got started or you've been doing this for a long time? I, I wanted to write songs when I was a little girl. I have memories of me sitting in my closet, you know, writing lyrics and trying to come up with melodies. But it wasn't until my first official song was a year ago, like right. not even a year ago. And what happened was I just got inspired and I wrote this, this what I thought was a song. I was like, okay, it's a, it's a poem, but it's a song. And I sent it to my buddy who um, I was already doing children's stories with. And I said, hey, you know, Jeff, he writes music all the time. And I was like, I, I wrote this thing. I think it's a song, blah, blah, blah. Sure enough, 24 hours later, he sent me the music. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was my first one. And then what I didn't know, Stephen, which I know you know, my story, um, was a week later. I lost my husband unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. And after that, I just started writing nonstop. It was like something had been opened inside of me. You know, the first one, I, you know, it was about how much I loved him and the journey I had taken to find him. And then after I lost him, all this stuff, of course, started coming up. It's been such a crazy year. Right. Um, and then writing music has just given me such a wonderful outlet to process so many feelings and to tell stories, not even just my own. I love telling stories. Right. <laughs> I call myself a storyteller. Um, so that me, the music has given me a way to process all of that. And it's given me a way to feel happy again and to process sadness or loss and, 
to talk about different kinds of relationships, and it's just been a really fun journey. So, yeah, you know, it's just become a thing now. I wrote two on the plane on the way home, you know. Right. We're going to take back into the studio and work. So it's just, yeah, it's become this beautiful outlet for me to, to work through a year that's been difficult but also rewarding at the same time. Well, Sh- Shanna, it looks like I'm kind of looking at your bio a little bit. I'm stalking you. Um, you do a lot of work Great. with kids, especially dis- disabled kids. Um, I have a, gran- I a grandson that has autism, so that's kind of close oh, to my heart. Oh, so you understand. Yeah, it's close yes. to my heart. And so I appreciate that the things you do, like, you know, involving yourself with these children's uh, organizations. Thank you. Yes. So my best friend, Liz Benning out of uh, Los Angeles, she works at a school for children who have aged out of high school with autism and then they go to this tech school and they learn all these amazing skills and but the problem is getting them hired because of course they do require a support system and so I started volunteering I started mentoring and then I started hiring and at one point on one of my books I had five young men on the spectrum working on my book project and I'm about to do that again I have another long project um it's just been so rewarding because they're beautiful young men and each one of them is different and it's 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 a challenge in a way to me to figure out how to work with each person and bring the best out of their personality and like they teach me so much as i'm sure you know Mm -hmm. um just about myself and about life and right i mean right well well, with autistic kids i mean with my grandson and we know a number of people now because of our networking with him there's Mm -hmm. finding what how to connect you know, and right. how, to, how to introduce them to new uh, routines, which is hard sometimes with, right. with that. You know, a lot of these kids, though, they've got one thing that they are just extremely, extremely good at. I mean, some of them can be like a piano player, and they can just play mm-hmm. stuff. That My you, grandson was you know. able to completely, he can fix your computer when he was like five years old. Right. He Isn't that amazing? He debug <laughs> a computer at five. Mm-hmm. And it, right. Don't know how he knew how to do it. I mean, he was fixing the teacher's computers at school. But on the other side of that, his social social, social interaction thing. was a little, he, yeah. it was hard introducing him to new people. Which yeah. I don't know, at this day and age, that social thing, I, I'm okay with that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Stephen doesn't He's have like, any friends. Oh, but I'm antisocial too. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it is a challenge. <laughs> It is a challenge, and that's what's so beautiful to me about each one of these young people. Is they're, they're, each one is special. You know, some can communicate well, some can barely communicate, some are pretty good socially, some have a lot of, you know, challenges socially. Um, they're all high-functioning, but they all definitely oh, have overcome amazing challenges to become the young men they are. And, don't, and, and, and like you said, they have talent. You and don't leave out the families, the, the families, the parents, the siblings, because oh. it presents a whole new set of challenges sometimes mm-hmm. to, to, uh, Absolutely. to deal with that. But you, know, you write children's books also, right? I mean, that's part of this. Yeah, so, that was, so it was interesting because my first children's book I wrote a couple of years ago, and I had it published. Again, I, I hired and mentored five young men on the spectrum during that project to do <clears throat> create video pieces and to help me illustrate the book and all within there you're going to see some beautiful art by children on the spectrum young people on the spectrum but um what happened was i had written that one and then jeff who's my music partner now had called me after he's like hey you know he, he has a worldwide listenership of his music original right. music already he does this beautiful peaceful music and he's like i really want to do some children's products um to help put kids to sleep. I'm getting requests for that. And I was like, oh, I love that. So I wrote stories and we went in the studio and we put sounds and music and sometimes we're making animal sounds in the mid, you know, in the studio at midnight, we're making chicken sounds and stuff. It's, it's a blast. <laughs> but um, we started doing those and we actually rushed up production. We were going to release them at later and then COVID hit. And we started, like you said, Sherry, thinking about all these parents mm-hmm. that now lost their support systems of schools and oh, yeah. resources. And, you know, and then all of a sudden they may have even lost their jobs. And now they have all their young, their children or young people at home with no support. And so we were like, okay, you know what? Let's get these stories out. So we went ahead and pushed them out as fast as we could um, to give parents a resource because the stories are available now. And Jeff's music, he has a nephew who's on the spectrum who he loves dearly. And um, and his music has been found with not just his nephew, but with other young people we've worked with to be very, very soothing to kids on the spectrum. Right. He just creates this amazing music that's so powerful. Um, and yeah, so we, we released a bunch of stories and... We've got some great feedback from even other countries. I got a Christmas card from Scotland. And it's, it was amazing. You know, the nice. families that are a little girl listens to your story every day. And my one of them in particular that is one of my favorites too is called Sing Yourself to Sleep. But um, yeah, it's just been such an honor to be able to try to do something to bring peace and joy to parents and young people. Oh, well, I know um, it's appreciated. Children. Like I said, if you've never lived w- with someone oh. in the autism spectrum, you cannot appreciate 
you know, the admiration, yeah. the love, the but also the challenge mm-hmm. of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, now, yeah. your, your music, you what, know, what style of music yeah. would you say that you uh, are you, you think? You know, what's funny is we're really crossing boundaries, and it's been a lot of fun. We, we were mixing genres, we're doing all kinds of stuff, and it's kind of, we're really, at this point, you know, Jeff and I laugh at all the time, we're like, we're old. We're going to do what we want to do, right? right? So we we just kind of crossed around, and we you know with one we wrote a tune the other day that's acoustic, kind of sounds like a little Happy Island tune. I mean, we've got stuff that's kind of rocky, you know, Southern rock. We've got bluesy stuff, and we've got a lot of co- cool things in the queue coming out. But the great thing about it is Jeff and I write music, but we write we're not we don't necessarily sing. Although I have to say, they just talked me into singing on two pieces, and I'm like, how did y'all even do that? But anyway. Um, we, we get with vocalists that, you know, we admire and appreciate people that we feel like could use a good push forward and we <coughs> work with them and feature them. So we've been able to cross genres, uh, because we're working Steven, with Steven, so you don't have a genre. Talent. Uh, you know, I, I sang in a band. I, I, I didn't know. David, maybe you are a genre. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? His you own just, like, genre. your own genre. There you go. Me, I'm Steven. I'm a genre. I'm a genre. Hello. Hey, by the way, he's very popular in Italy, apparently. There you go. He's got some of his CDs he had to ship over there. So. Yeah. So. Well, and this is exciting, too, because we're also crossing boundaries with language because I travel a lot. I've been to India quite a few times going back this year. Uh, we're going to St. Thomas to write in May. Uh, but we are also just recorded our first song partly in Hindi, which I'm so excited huh. about. And then later this year, I'm supposed to, if it all works out, go and work at a studio. Uh, the singer we used on that track, his mother is a professional singer in India and has a studio there. And I'm supposed to go back and do some stuff with her in the studio on another children's story that's written in a completely um, imaginary language. And she's going to sing on that CD for us and help us write some music for us. So, so y'all really excited. We're crossing over all over the place. You're going to India? Yeah, for wow. like that's my fourth trip. You yeah. better take your chicken with you because I don't think they eat food, meat over there. Do they eat meat in India? Yeah. <laughs> You know what? You say, I, I did a, a documentary years ago, and it was for a school for disabled children. And I brought a team over there, and we shot a documentary on the school. And we were in, uh, literally in an area where they didn't eat any meat. Yeah. Even. And also, you couldn't drink. Oh, so see, Becky wouldn't make it at all over there. It was a dry <laughs> county and, a, like, a vegetarian county. And let me Well, just you wouldn't you, make it either, no meat. That yeah. we won't speak of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because we were drinking at 3 a.m. because we are on the other time zone. And then we were getting in a rickshaw and drive and like take us however far it me it takes to get us to a buffet because I had all men on my team except one one woman yeah. and they were like we have to have meat we're gonna die right yeah I'm with they would drive us in a rickshaw like six ma- miles to find some some, some meat that's why I carry <laughs> my potted I carry my potted meat and spam women <laughs> uh, yeah your carry, beef jerky yeah huh? I got it I'm ready to go <laughs> now if these folks out here want to get up and see some of this stuff because you've got a lot going on I mean like I said with the yes, books and all the I'm stuff excited. with the music I would that. love that yeah so what uh, so we, where do they need to go to to get up with you Okay, well, we put everything under an umbrella of my calm world right now. My calm world. And right. that's easy to remember, and that's where you go and you can find meditations and children's nighttime stories and all that stuff. Also from there, you'll find the link to our music project, which is fireandwatermusic.com. Right. Um, there's no WW on that, just Fire and Water Music. Or if you just go to the My Calm World site, you will find everything on Fire and Water Music. On So we basically have a first album coming out, and then we now have all these beautiful collaborations as well that will be in addition to the album that will be released in all through this year. Yeah, you've even got a link to Jeff Gold to his music. But I, a bedtime, you got bedtime mm-hmm. stories, a link to bedtime stories? See, yeah. you don't have and to you know read Dr. Dr. Zeus anymore, it. Stephen. I like Dr. Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> right, I do too. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's great because I even have adults that text me and say, I use your bedtime story to go to sleep. I had a friend uh, who was dealing with a lot of anxiety, and he's like, I listened to it once, and I just started listening to it at night. And I'm like, look, I listen to it too sometimes. You know, it just it's soothing. And I don't know. I, mean, I think we all have a lot of anxiety right now. It's been a tough year, right? So yeah, for a lot of people, it just gives them a reason to stop and focus and breathe a little bit. Yep. We could all use that. Even genre. There you go. That's your superhero name, Steven. Genre. genre. The genre man. I thought it was Here Mercurial Man. Save I'm, the day. I'm the Mercurial Man genre guy. <laughs> well, Shannon, we used to do a word of the day. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, and for Steven, because he's dyslexic and he's just dumb on top of that. But, uh, yeah, so the word of the day didn't go too well. We had to quit. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. He's not really dumb. Yeah. I just pick on him. <laughs> All right, girl. Well, listen, now, it's always great to talk to you. It's hard to keep up with you. So now, you in, are you in Chattanooga now? Where are you at? 
Yes, I'm back in Chattanooga. I went through Nashville for two days to meet with another new songwriter, and then, uh, yeah, and then I'm back in chat now. So. All right, well, good deal. We'll, we'll get you Chatting back it on. up in the chit chat. Great. I love the city. I've only been here a year, and I love it so much. That's a great place. I love Chattanooga too. <laughs> yep, no doubt about it. So anyway, all right, girl, we got to get to a break. And like I said, I sure appreciate you taking your time out of your day because you're obviously you a too. busy girl. And, uh, Thank you, guys. You need some calm. You know where to find it. There you we go. do. We do. So bedtime stories. <laughs> My, My calm, calm world. world. Calm. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Thank right, you. You take care. Have a good day, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening. This is Stephen Phillips, host of The Morning Dish. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a lot more interviews out there to listen to. Plus, you can listen online every morning at WJULradio.com or Lake 97.7 WJUL. And give us a like on our Facebook page, The Morning Dish.